Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Natasha and today I'm going to be sharing with you some things to consider if you're traveling with kids. I don't really have any advice specifically because this was my first time traveling with our toddler son. And these are some things that I noted that was good to do and might be worthwhile for you to consider if you are also going to be traveling with a young one. Now things that I did ahead of time is start giving our son some vitamins and we also had some elderberry syrup that I gave him just to make sure that his immune system was ready to receive what it would receive. <laughs> Obviously when you are traveling you're coming in contact with lots of people, lots of public spaces and so the best way to sort of prevent illness and sickness for when you arrive at your destination or when you get home is to just make sure that your immune system is as strong as it can be and so I want that for our son as well. So a few days before our trip I started making sure that he was having elderberry syrup, vitamin D drops every day and a little bit of vitamin C in his food somehow just to boost his immune system and ours as well but this is about traveling with kids. Now you can also do this during your trip if you can pack your vitamins and elderberry syrup and I also did this as soon as we got back home to make sure that we're just continuing that on because sometimes those germs just take a little while and pop up later and I didn't want that to happen so I've been doing that for the past few days still and we'll probably end it off now. The other thing I did ahead of time is get a whole bunch of new toys. I just went straight to the Value Village and got a whole bunch of new toys that would be fun for him to play with on the airplane that he's never seen before, would be all new to him and so fun. This is a highly recommend just because kids like new toys that they haven't seen before. Now depending on your flight and how long and where you're going, it is nice to fly with a baby that is well rested, I can attest to that. We had a fresh, spunking, happy little toddler hopping on the plane and by the time we got to take off it was his first nap. So I guess that only works if your kids are still napping in the morning. Maybe that doesn't work if they're getting older but that worked well for us. And then on our way back we did fly back on the second nap in the afternoon. So if you can somehow figure that out in timing that would be ideal. And then also think through how does your child nap at home. So if they're used to sleeping in their crib or used to sleeping in the car rides, what will that look like if you're actually moving? Now one thing I can attest to is that it's really hard for a baby, or at least ours, to fall asleep in an airport. There's just so much new and exciting things and people moving around. It seemed nearly impossible, but thankfully he held on and right at our takeoff he fell right asleep. So that worked out well, but I do think airports are really tough for kids to fall asleep in. So if they're sleeping in a crib at home, what will that look like on the plane or in the airport? If they're used to sleeping on you, what will that look like? Just kind of thinking through these scenarios because your baby is going to be the same everywhere. The way that they do things at home is the way they'll do them in public. Plus you have this little extra bit of the unknown and all the entertainment and new stuff around them to consider. So think through how naps will go, think through how meals will go, and plan accordingly. Now getting around the airport is another thing to think about. I've seen some handy little strollers that you can take all the way with you right until you get onto the plane and there you can check it and they'll bring it right back to you as soon as you get off the plane. So that's kind of nice. We had a small umbrella stroller. We also had our backpack carrier with us because we thought we would do some walking on our trip and we did actually use it at some point when we needed it to be hands-free. We just popped him right into this backpack carrier. The only thing you'll have to consider is if he's not actually in it, somebody still has to carry the backpack carrier. So that may not work in all scenarios, but that is something you could do if you need to be hands-free with your baby in the pack. And I actually wondered if he would fall asleep in the pack more readily, but I don't know. The airport is just so exciting. <laughs> I don't think so. If you can book your seats, I do have some recommends there. There is usually preferred seating in an airplane. One sec. <sighs> Hydrate. <laughs> There's usually preferred seating in an airplane kind of right to the front, just behind business class that you can pay a little bit more for, but has a little bit of play area right at the front, like in front of your seats. That is nice. That is nice for that. There's a small area that they could play on the ground. And so if your kid is at that age where they love sitting on the ground and playing with toys and books, maybe that will work for you. I actually preferred sitting one row just behind that. You still have that extra leg room but you do have the tray table right in front of you that you can play with and keep them entertained with plus the storage in the seat in front of you that you can store things in which we didn't have when we were right up against business class that wall does not have storage super accessible 
and it doesn't have a tray top table right in front of you that you can keep them occupied with. Something else to think about is that your child under two can fly on your lap and not pay for the extra seat. We were so fortunate that the first flight didn't have somebody beside us, so we actually had all three seats open to us and it was really nice for him to be able to play in between us and jump on the seat and go mad. That was really nice. On our way back, we did not have that and so he was genuinely on our lap. And so for a toddler that is just walking, that is pretty well impossible. Surely you can keep them entertained for maybe an hour or two eating and playing, but after that, they just want to be on the move. And so we spent a lot of time in the aisles and mostly in the back by the toilets where the air hostess hang out. And they were kind and nice enough to keep him occupied with new lights and little clips and things that open all their trays. And so a lot of time spent actually outside of the seat. The reality of sitting with a kid on your lap is just bogus. I am actually amazed that they sell seats like this. Although it's lovely, you save on a flight ticket. I think it's nearly impossible. Something else that really helped take a lot of time up was just small snacks. And it was so nice to just keep him entertained having one little bite at a time with his little fingers. I also think it was helpful to pack a separate backpack for your little one. This was nice because they can carry it around the airport if they want to, or you can hook it right to the stroller. But it was just nice to have specific things ready on hand that I didn't have to go into the backpack to find. Speaking of, we traveled with a really big hiking pack. So it's a little bit bigger than a backpack, but it's not as big as a giant hiking backpack. It was like kind of a medium size. Super nice. I could fit in a diaper bag, a bag of toys, and I think I had my carrier in there, plus a blanket. All fits really well, easily to access, and there's lots of little pockets if you need to put little trinkets around it. So a good idea to travel with a hiking backpack if you've got one that's kind of a medium size. Back to his little backpack. It was nice to just have specific things like his snacks, toys, little toys, um, a sweater, things like that, right in his backpack that was easily saved under the seat so we don't have to go up to the storage up here to find some specific things and could be saved really easily under the seat in front of us. Another reason why it's so good to have the second row is that you can actually store stuff in the seat underneath in front of you whereas if you're right up against that wall there's no storage in front of you and they actually make you put everything away that's on the floor because there's no protection from it flying all over if something were to go wrong. And finally, your emotions really matter. Our kids feed off of us, I truly believe that. And so if you're worried and nervous, they will be worried and nervous or sense some uneasiness. And so if you're calm and fun and playful, they will feed off of that and be a delight. And then I would say, make it a lot of fun. Do whatever you can to be silly and playful my husband really did this and ran around the airport with our son, having little mini races about how quickly they can go, and, and we are having fun, so he's having fun. And so hopefully that is helpful to you, and, and I wanna wish you well on your trip and your travels. I hope that this has been helpful to you in some way, and if you have found it helpful, would you please consider liking and subscribing to this channel and catching some of our upcoming content. All right, see you, bye.